Hello. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Unreal Engine live stream. I'm your host, Alexander Pascal, and joining me today is Matt Kohlenschmidt. And was that Shelly? Okay, cool. W welcome to 2017. We're back and in action, and it's awesome. Um, so today we're going to be covering a little bit of news, community spotlight, etc. And then we're going to be talking about uh, UI font outlines and another interesting UI thing that you've got coming in 4.15 that we haven't really talked a lot about. So, um, but first, it's the news. All right, so the most important thing in the news by far, I think, to all of you out there that are actively developing is this. The 414.2 hotfix has been released. It is available on your launcher, as you can expect. All you have to do is hit the update button on your 414 build on binary in there, or hop over to GitHub and grab the updates out of that. Um, and we're looking at uh, 415 preview coming up pretty soon, just a couple weeks away it looks like, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, keep an eye out for it, and of course we'll make lots of announcements and noise around it, and then we'll get Mike out here to talk about it too. Uh, but that's it for the hot fix. Check it out. It's just a bunch of critical stuff, you know, uh, standard good stuff, so go grab it. Next up, we have a very interesting little um, showcase, um, Choreographica. So basically, MTV um, had a team make this little project called Choreographica. Uh, I'd love you guys to come check out this article that uh, Daniel Kaiser has posted up. Um, but it's, uh, and there's a great video to it too. We're not going to show you the video right now. Um, we have a couple other videos to show you today. Couldn't schedule everything in. But it's a really interesting process on how it works. Basically, you have this interesting, cute, bubbly character that's made out of base geometry of cubes and spheres, dances around the room, but it's actually being controlled by a whole lot of people on Twitter. Or, uh, um, yeah, Twitter. That's how it works. So you have people on Twitter uh, send in messages. And um, here you can see that he's probably dancing to Kanye West. And, uh, and what it does is it actually interprets the data from the tweet and turns it into dance moves. And so as you send it emojis, it creates explosive dance moves. And actually, I was hoping they had a picture of it, but it actually like throws yeah like the dots and stuff. It actually shoots emojis out of itself <laughs> as you use them and uh, talk to it with this particular hashtag. And then, yeah, it just reads that. But it was a really cool idea. And uh, if you read the article down at the bottom, it says that they were inspired by Twitch Plays Pokemon, which is, you know, where the yeah. chat is literally trying to, like, all control one button or control one button at a time, but everyone can press buttons as much as they like. And so very interesting uh, uh, idea. And it's cool social experiment for sure, I'd say. Um, next up. Whoa, that was weird. I think turned black for a second. Um, Unreal Engine Marketplace got updated uh, for December. Of course, we always do these the month behind. So December's updates uh, were awesome. And I'm not going to read off every single one because as you all know, and all of you sellers know too, the Marketplace has picked up quite a lot. And every month, we have tons of cool stuff. I'm going to just do a quick scroll down so you can get an idea of the, of the big images that we have. Lots of new character stuff in here too. Um, yeah, uh, these were these were cool. The MOBA characters, um, tons of new environments, uh, audio blueprints, special effects, um, materials. Come in here, check them all out. There's a great breakdown on the blog, and of course, you can just go to the marketplace and check out all the newest stuff that's come in. And uh, oh yeah, all the nice new plugins. Um, thank you all for for that. See, I remember, you know, I'm sure some of the sellers out there remember before we could even have plugins out there, and it's really filled out with great content. Um, and then, yeah, prop sets and sound effects, items, etc. cetera. And um, so, yeah, that's it. Really great setup here. Um, and finally, I want to give a shout out to the Marketplace Teams thing here. Adam um, wanted to make sure that everybody got a, a reminder. And this is actually for last month's poll, but there is another one coming up for January. But I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, to look for it. But uh, every month we have a featured uh, community um, assets. And basically what this is, is people in the community who like stuff in the marketplace want to have it featured because it's cool. They come out and they vote on these polls. And so on the forums, if you go to the marketplace forums, sticky up at the top is the community uh, top featured poll. Uh, check that out. Go and vote for the things that you like the most. And then people who um, actually make it onto that every month get a special badge star, uh, star, sorry, star badge for marketplace sellers. It's the prestige. And then... Um, uh, yeah, you also get a special uh, placement up on the front of the store, which is really awesome for the sellers. So uh, make sure to go vote on that and to, uh, if you're a seller, to encourage people to come vote for you. 
And that's what we got for the news today for those things. Um, there's one more thing, but there's no, um, there's no actual thing. Clint, can you bring it back in? And to me, just me, just bring it back in. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to add to the news, uh, there's going to be a change up. Now, a few of you have already asked me about the UE4 jam this month, and there's not going to be one. Uh, nor is there going to be one next month, because we're moving to quarterly. So in March, we'll have our first one, and the price is going to be a lot bigger. Think like instead of having a monthly small jam, we would have four kind of epic mega jams. We're always going to have the epic mega jam. It'll be bigger and huger than ever. Um, and actually, we've got a lot of people interested in sponsoring, so it's going to be even bigger this year uh, than it was last year, and we had some amazing stuff last year. Um, but these quarterly jams are going to be huge. We've got a lot more sponsors coming out. We'll have a lot more uh, marketing around them and also a lot more um, hype for the winners. So you'll get a lot more exposure. Uh, it should be a lot of fun for everyone. Um, and also this way it gives you a break in between all these jams. And uh, we don't compete with a jam every single month, basically. Uh, overall, I think it's going to be a big improvement. But as always, I'm a malleable person. I love to hear your feedback and your thoughts. Um, but for 2017, we're going to move to quarterly. And uh, I think that'll be a really great change of pace. So just didn't want to surprise anybody. All righty. So next up, let's hop back over. Pow. Um, and oops, that got off kilter. All right. So uh, this week's Top Karma Earners of the Week. Uh, we have, um, so great. It's a new year. I should probably start off by explaining what's happening, right? So every week, starting this week of 2017, um, we always uh, come in and say thank you to everyone who's on the Top Karma Earners list on the Answer Hub. If you come out to the Answer Hub, you ask a question and get an answer. The person who answered you gets a little bit of karma. Uh, if you upvote them, they give a little bit more karma. Uh, if other people come in there and say thank you, you know, they get a little bit more. And eventually it stacks up to getting on a high scoreboard. The top three people on our high scoreboard get badges on the forum so everyone can see how cool and helpful they are out here. Um, so thank you all so much for participating and, and helping each other. It, it does a lot more for the overall community too, just to have you out here helping each other like that. Um, but this week, uh, we have some new names here. Uh, Lunaper, I don't believe that we've had you on here before. And uh, Dartanla, you want to take a... Why do you think, think it's Dartanla? Dartanla. Yeah. Unless it's the two L's and makes like the ya, like Dartanya. Yeah, I'm, I'm not good with names. No. That seems about right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and then Shadow River. Um, Shadow River, you're uh, one of our veterans, and I'm I'm going to just have to make like a Shadow River badge or something at this point because you've like prestiged 30 times over, buddy. That's incredible. But um, thank you all so much. Uh, no this is really great. More. Well, okay, well, we can read everybody too. I mean, it, so so Matt, you want a fried dryer, dyer, fried fried rider? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think it's fried rider. What's the next one? Pierre poops. Yep, I wanted to get her to say poops. Sorry. I have no problem saying that. That's why I'm <laughs> to, giggling this whole to time. To tires. And, and then, uh, uh, how do you say this next one? Yarrow mast, Jarrow mast. Probably that. Probably probably Jarrow mast. Yeah. Morkarth. He's a great orc warrior, Morkarth. Pretty sure. Shattuck. Shattuck. Yeah. And Ozzy Burger. We've seen Ozzy Burger around quite a bit, actually. So, thank you, everybody. Um, shout outs to all of you, of course. Great work. And to anyone who didn't make it on the list, you know how to do it now. Come out to answers.unrealengine.com and start talking to people and start helping each other out. So, very cool. And next up, I'm not going to play this next video because it's actually um, something you're going to want to watch the whole thing. And uh, it went over our like minute and a half time mark just by a bit. But um, just want to say, if you guys remember, Hanako's team came on to a stream, gosh, it was like over a year ago now for an interview to talk about the early development of Hanako. And it's really great third person action samurai game. Just want to let you all know that they've been posting up dev diaries. If you come up to YouTube and check out Hanako Honor and Blade, you can actually see some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, as developers yourself, I know that it's important for you to actually get a get an idea of how other people are doing it out there. And um, even veterans like to just double check and you know, see what other ideas are floating around, new mechanics, etc. So I thought that it'd be very cool to come out there, check out Hanako. Um, and uh, yeah, just... Um, 
really great thing. And I'll also, since I'm on the spotlight, I might as well mention this. If you yourself are making some sort of a dev diary, writing tutorials, uh, creating amazing rendered content, and you want to show it off and you think it's like really interesting to see, send it on over to me, um, forums, PM, Twitter, however you can get it to me, and let me know that you found something cool and you think it's worth spotlighting. And uh, that's how uh, these projects end up up here. So uh, thank you to the Hanako team. Really cool dev diary. Uh, sorry, didn't want to play the whole thing today, but uh, definitely want to check that one out. All right, cool. We have uh, two other spotlight videos. Uh, so Clint, uh, why don't you roll uh, A119. Cool. Um, oh, whoops. <laughs> Still got this up. But, whoa, there we go. But yeah, so um, Subject A119 uh, is a game by uh, Mr. Goatsy. Uh, as you guys might know him off of uh, forums and Twitter, etc. He's all over the place. And in fact, he might be hanging out here today. He's got a Kickstarter uh, going right now, which I've got, which will be in the description of the archive. I've just put it out onto uh, the chat right now, so you should be able to check it out. Um, subject A119, as you saw, is a, um, I guess uh, some of you in chat already threw the word out, portal. But it kind of reminds you of that in aesthetic, but it's all puzzle solving from a first-person per first perspective and uh, it's very unique kind of level layouts and interesting kinds of ways of interacting with the world. I love seeing cool mechanics like that so um, if you've got a game that's coming out that has a bunch of unique interesting mechanics or a Kickstarter project like that hit me up too because I'm always interested in checking out what you have. So next up we have a Steam game to show off. Clint you got the video? Uh, no. no? I don't have that one, the YouTube video thing? Oh, you're right! That one uh, didn't pull, did it? Nope, I'm sorry. The other video didn't pull properly. So, yep, you're right. Uh, let me just go grab it. I know, that's all totally me too. Luckily, it's all right here. Cool. So, main page, turn on. Cool. So, uh, Ley Lines. Um, this was brought to me by someone in the community that this wasn't actually their uh, team. Yeah, haha, ha, Alt F4. Yeah, haha. Ha. Yeah, everyone's making fun of me because I lost the thing. Um, but Ley Lines, uh, this is a very gorgeous little game here. Um, and I believe it's called uh, Maria, um, Maria Studios that had made it. But uh, it's a free game. Uh, it's on Steam. It's got really great reviews so far. And it's a good... Um, third person platformer with like a lot of interesting style to it um, so it's gosh it's kind of hard to describe um, something to compare it to it's definitely got a lot of platformer elements it's got a lot of those kind of classic um, uh, geez you know now that I really thought I had an idea of it but now that I'm thinking about it I can't like one for one say it's a lot like X um, it's definitely got easy to understand and grasp controls from a perspective of that you're used to, but here, let me just kind of throw into the middle here. You can get a better idea. It's uh, an aesthetically powerful kind of thing to see, too. Um, they spent a lot of time making sure that the environments and world felt like they were a unique thing and not something that you've seen before. Uh, it has that kind of chunky, low poly style to it. And yeah, as you can see, it's, I guess it is mostly based off of your kind of arrow usage to build bridges, 
but I don't know because yeah, it's, you, you manipulate platforms, etc., using this tool. But I don't know what other games kind of have that kind of, like a series of manipulators like this. Because I've played one with like one or another, but this is why I was having a hard time comparing it to anything. Because it's like one game might have one, another game might have another, but this one just got a lot together. So. Great combination of mechanics, uh, really nice style. Ley Lines is out here on Steam. It's free. Why not give it a try, right? So, um, Mirai Studios, thank you so much. Looks really cool. Uh, and if you guys have a game that you've recently sent out on Steam, let me know about it. Cool. Um, speaking of brand new things that are all hot and shiny, don't you have some cool new uh, UI features to show yeah, us off? Yeah, I do. All right, I'm going to let you have this so you can drive. <laughs> Uh, trine. Oh, someone said, yeah, they said Trine. That's probably the, the closest thing that you can uh, that they could come up with. Yeah, that's probably a good comparison in a lot of ways. Um, cool. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem. Um, so, yeah, so in 4.14, we introduced uh, outline fonts, which has been uh, something that has been often requested. You just didn't have time to do it. Uh, but now we did. So um, I was going to show it off. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward how to use. Basically, you're in UMG here, mm -hmm. put a text block down, it says text block, that's how you know where it is. <laughs> um, it could, Good you to could, know. You could use any text you want, though, oh, in awesome. any language. <laughs> uh, we have definitely tested it with cr crazy complicated languages like Arabic, and it works fine. And so. Klingon's fine, and like... Uh, you know, yeah, I have not Elvish. tested Kling Klingon, but yes, okay. it should be fine. Dothraki's good though, right? Yeah, they're all they're all good. <laughs> Basically, it works. Um, good, good. And so, right down here in the details panel, um, when you click on the font, you'll see here's your normal font settings where you can change your font. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's this new thing called outline settings, and you can change the size of it. So I can do five. Yeah. Um, and there's your outline. And, and it seems to be pretty similar in the setup to, uh, like, if you've used Photoshop and it has, like, the uh, outline um, yeah. alteration Photoshop to definitely has some more techniques you can use. <coughs> oh, of course, it, yeah. it has the luxury of not having to do this at runtime every frame. But, yes, it's, it's pretty much the same as Photoshop. We actually, when we're looking at UI features like this one and the one I'm going to show after this, we mm -hmm. do look at things like Photoshop because it is, we often get, you know, forum posts or answer hub about people comparing it to Photoshop because they, they kind of maybe they make their UI in Photoshop mm -hmm. ahead of time and then, you know, they, they replicate it in UMG and it doesn't look the same. So, I mean, so we get it. Sometimes it's not possible because, like I said, Photoshop is not a runtime thing, but mm -hmm. still we, we do look at those kinds of tools. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, you can change the color, you can change the opacity, all the basics, all the basics, and mm -hmm. you can do this. So, you know, I, I've changed the outline to blue. And you can change the obviously the fill area to be some other color if you if you want. It yeah, make it a nice bright weird color, and then there you go. Go. yeah, there you go, yellow and blue. That works. Um, and there is no real limit on the size of the outline, but it starts getting goofy if you if you make it too huge. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about them is that there's this fun little checkbox called separate fill alpha. Uh, and I hopefully I made the tooltip pretty easy to understand, but basically the way this works is when the font is rendered, um, the font has anti-aliasing around the edges. Um, so if you have an opaque fill area mm -hmm. and an opaque outline area, when they overlap, they'll be kind of on the edges, they'll be kind of anti-aliased. And that's not what you want unless... It looks wrong. I, it's hard to see on here, but it would look wrong um, if if you you tried to you if you tried to have them completely uh, filled. Okay. Um, so we have this separate. So you, you if you're on your own computer, you can tell this a lot better than on here. But basically, if you check this and they're completely opaque, you might see a little bit of inconsistencies where the b alpha blending does not work properly. Or the colors don't blend properly between each other when the mm. outline meets meets the the fill. And it creates like but, the two D edition of Z fighting yeah. essentially. But so so what we did <clears throat> is added this in case you wanted to have a separate alpha for the inside. So if you don't do this, you can see that it doesn't really blend properly because what mm -hmm. you're actually blending against is a solid thick blue uh, font uh, behind the whole thing because they're just big bubbles around it. They're not 
so what this does when you turn it on is it actually subtracts out the area that you're that's the fill area is supposed to be on. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so that's how it works on the back end. It's more like you yeah. have like two layers of text and then yeah. blew up one of the layers. And the reason we do that is because we want it to kind of look like a, the reason, outline effects are like kind of like blobby effects. Um, I also want to mention a few things that they can't do easily. This is not a replacement. If you're familiar with distance field fonts, this is not a replacement for that. It's going to, it's not, this is not the right, you, you might be able to make a really complicated material that do, does this, mm -hmm. but it's not um, like for soft shadows and stuff around fonts. Okay, so now I'm super familiar with distance field <laughs> font, whatever you distance said. Distance field. But for those at home that might not be super uh, into UI layout stuff, just distance to, field what is would a, that be? I think it's a technique that I think Valve first wrote a paper on where you actually have like this, the, the like a, a, a it computes a f distance from the the center of the font, I believe, um, where where you can actually do things where you can have like gradients that like are along the the the, f the outline of the font and things like that. Um, I'm not describing it well because I haven't read the paper in a really long time, but um, that is something we're actually looking at adding at some point. Um, but I just wanted to mention that that's not exactly what it's for. Mm -hmm. um, I my explanation sucked because it's. It was try to try to oversimplify it, but it's there's okay. a paper called there's a paper called distance field fonts, if, uh, and I think Valve wrote it. If you're really interested in that, and they make some great um, articles. Yeah, uh, the other thing you can do, and is there's a material that you can specify for fonts that's been there for a while. Uh, you can also specify a separate material for the outline, uh, and I have an example of some pretty cheesy flame effect that I did in five minutes before <laughs> this started. Um, but basically all this is is it's um you've got just a normal outline color and it's not being affected by this material mm -hmm. um, you know just like that uh, and then you have instead uh, the color is not being applied here um, well it actually is but it's actually being affected by this material uh, that I have here which is a simple panner with this texture that I found in one of our test it's, games. It looks like a cloud plus noise and then like yeah. really contrast it out it, pretty heavily. Uh, I'm not an artist. An artist could do a better job. Yeah. Just, um, just go into Photoshop, render clouds, and then mess with contrast for a while, you guys. You'll yeah. get it. Uh, and, and, it, and it does this. Um, a couple other things. The, uh, the font materials supply two different texture coordinates. Mm -hmm. Texture coordinate zero is the is a zero to one UV channel across the entire block of text that you're looking at. So text block that's goes zero to one. Mm -hmm. Texture coordinate one is zero to one on each character. So you can apply like a zero to one texture on every character uniquely and it will fit rather than trying to stretch it off around the whole text block. Oh wow. Yeah. So so, so each of those is built around the character, not like yeah, your so one giant thing. Zero of text. to one, zero to one. I don't know if they can see the yeah, they can. Okay. Yeah, they can see the mouse, yeah. Yeah, zero to one, zero to one, zero to one, zero to one. If you use, if you use uh, texture coordinate one, if you use texture coordinate zero, it's zero to one across the whole thing. Um, you're probably thinking, well, why? how am I going to remember one versus zero? Um, they're, another they're feature so coming similar. soon <laughs> is we ac actually added a, a material function that actually has a description instead of just arbitrary w index. So there's a... A, mat a material function that will basically say, do I want zero to one on the text, uh, the whole text block, or zero to one on the uh, each individual character? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it it we felt like when I when I added materials um, font materials a long time ago, I felt like zero to one across the whole thing was not enough, so I added the next one. Um, but there's uh, some things you can do with outlines. Um, it's pretty simple. Performance-wise, it's these all should be batched together, so there shouldn't really be any performance concerns or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it with outlines. It's really straightforward. It's uh, like in the first yeah. one, like you showed, it's uh, basically a checkbox for yeah, I want it on. Well, not a checkbox, but set it to not zero. To, yeah, if you if you set it to zero, it basically just turns it off. Yeah, that's it. It's like set it to anything besides zero, and it's on. Then scale from there, change out the color. 
the other one is apply material and then watch the magic happen. Yeah. It's it's actually like uh, like you were saying, it's very simple to create an incredible looking uh, effect. And I could see how you know you have a selection screen, and therefore that turns on when you have something selected and yep. look really great to pan up like that. Yep. Um, cool. Cool. So yeah, that's outlines. Um, it works with everything else like shadows and all that. Um, but yeah. So should we move on to the next one? Yeah, yeah. Um, you said it works with shadows. Like, oh, sorry, the shadow, the shadow. Um, oh, oh, the f the outline, the 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 drop shadow. Yeah. Actually, oh, that's so funny. Someone asked if we were planning on adding drop shadows. So drop that answers shadows right that. Here. We have them. There you go. That's called shadow yeah. offset. Yeah, and then you pick a shadow color. So I'll just illustrate oh, with some ooh. silly color. Um. Well, uh, A is, should be one. Yep. Got to be able to see it. Turn up that alpha. So oh, there you go. Ah, there you go. so that's the, drop shadows. There's drop shadow. There you go. Cool. Not a separate. There's no separate material for drop shadows. We, it's something we could add, but again, distance fields. That's the future. At some point. Oh, okay. I can't really. I don't know when, because honestly, it's hard. It's hard to predict. It is. It is, and it's not a good idea to start making promises on builds. I, it's I, never a I, good I, idea. Yeah, it'll. It may never happen. <laughs> So. Well, don't say that either. <laughs> no, is it in May? <laughs> I, I really want. It. I really want. It. We're we're looking at uh, mm -hmm. hopefully adding more features like this to UMG in the future. Cool. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, next up, you got some uh, some newer stuff. Yeah. So this not is not out four fourteen. This will be out in four fifteen. Yeah. Um, and you can add pictures now. No. Um, so this is a feature that allows you to blur rectangles within your UI and also the scene behind it. So basically this allows you to um, just create, it's just a simple Gaussian blur that applies to whatever rectangle that you specify. Um, and it also has uh, the ability to have widgets inside of it. So it's kind of this layered thing where if you want to pop open like a menu and blur the background behind it, you now can. And I was just going to demonstrate how that works. So just as a basic UMG setup, I'm just using an image as the background so you can clearly see it. Um, Mm -hmm. And I've created a canvas panel, <coughs> and there's a new widget called Background Blur. If you just find it under special effects, mm -hmm. and you just drop that in like any other widget. Um, now, the widget itself has a strength. Mm -hmm. So if I set this to 5, you can see it starts blurring. If I, it goes from 0 to 100, which is just an arbitrary value I picked for usability reasons. But that's like super frosted glass kind of thing, and then you know yeah. zero zero is off uh, means it applies nothing. I could see that being used for a ton of interesting effects. Right. So Paragon actually is um, already using this. Like mm. if, if you check out Paragon, you can you, you'll definitely be able to tell where they're using it. Oh really? And I think it works out pretty well. Cool. Um, so that's the basic effect. Um, again, it blurs everything behind it, including the scene. Um, but it will not blur anything on top of it. So yes, you can layer these. You can stack blurs on top of blurs um, and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, I can, I'll demonstrate that. Um, so I added the, just like something that you might want to do, right? So mm -hmm. again, this is a text block with a border. I've darkened the border a little bit and the background behind it is blurred. Um, and so this is actually inside the content slot of the blur so that basically it allows you to like let's say you have a menu that you want to open up and blur whatever is behind the menu. You would put your menu inside the content slot of the blur. Oh. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be inside the blur to not blur. It's all layered. So I have an overlay here. And the way overlay works, if you're not familiar, is that mm -hmm. it, it, um, it, everything in the overlay has a, s a separate Z order. So, you know, the, the, f the, the order is this is first rendered and this is last rendered if you're going if you're going down the list uh, so in this case like I have a button on top of it's not centered but once I get it you'll see that the button is tiny but the point is that it uh, it is on top of the blur area but it's not inside the blurs content so basically anything on top of the blur will not be blurred in Z order Okay, so yeah, seems to make sense. It's yeah. like if you had a blurry piece of glass, you slide it in between two things, the thing yeah. on top's not gonna be blurry. And you could put a blur on top of this if you wanted, and it would mm -hmm. blur it even more. Um, so let's talk about performance. So um, it's pretty performant. Mm -hmm. um, full, like some of the tests I did, full strength, like 
the strength number here is what affects performance and then the size. So if you have a really tiny area that you're blurring mm -hmm. and a really high strength, it's probably not going to be like much different. But if you have a really large area and a really high strength, that's where performance is going to matter. I did test this on 1080p PS4 class hardware, mm -hmm. uh, full strength blur, which is way overkill for a lot of reasons. A lot of oh yeah, I, I mean, mean that's at, frosted glass at basically that point, kind of thing. Yeah, like we have a bunch of meeting rooms in here that have mm -hmm. like this frosted glass on it, and that's what I, I keep saying frosted glass because it looks like looking through like a frosted glass window. Um, that right there is the highest strength possible, and that takes half a millisecond on PS4 on a PS4 class hardware. Okay, so it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, I wouldn't. And of course, you can add more of them to the screen. But every time you add more, you're adding more mm -hmm. render target switches. Mm -hmm. More draw calls for that. Uh, yeah, the draw mm -hmm. calls aren't really the big problem. It's the render target and the pixel shader. Oh, okay, that's good uh, to know. So if you stack fifty of them on the screen, um, you might run into performance problems. Huh. Um, I'm not going to show it now. Just I don't want to spend forever on it. But there's also if you do stat slate, which is our how uh, the stats for performance in Slate, it'll show you how much time it's spending on post-processing effects, which is this blur thing. Um, it does work on all platforms, um, but you really need to be careful using this on mobile. Mobile has a... Oh, well, I'm going to knock that question out. Someone had asked, uh, how well does it work on mobile? And uh, can you, you get into the you performance You can use on mobile. Um, obviously, <coughs> low-end mobile is not a good choice for this. I mean, really, render target switching on mobile is expensive. Some of the GPUs mm -hmm. are not that good. Mm. Um, you you can use it, but you just need to be careful and and don't build some entire workflow around always being blurred. And I want to ex explain another setting that you can use if you want to target multiple tiers of hardware. Like, um, you know, you have low end, you know, low end basic computers to super high end computers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and this is actually being used, again, in Paragon. So we have this thing called a low-quality fallback. Oh, that's um, useful. Low-quality fallback means if it's in low-quality mode, it will use this brush instead of the blur. So you can make a material, you can make a texture, and it works like any other brush in any other image where it will just use that instead. So Paragon is using some sort of you know simple gradient texture that wor works nicely with their menus um, for the brush. So mm -hmm. now how you enable low-quality fallback via a setting that's game specific. So um, in Paragon, I think when post-process settings are low in the user settings in the menu in the game, mm -hmm. it turns this on. Um, so you'll want to make the decision based on what platforms you're targeting and what your performance looks like on those platforms to determine whether or not you need to turn on low quality. It's not an automatic thing. It will n even if you have this set, it will not turn on automatically unless you set a setting and it's a CVAR and it should be in documentation. Um, I, it's like, it's like, you know, let's look at it. it. It's like slate dot force, force background blur low quality override. So if you have that set, it won't it won't apply here because um, I don't have anything set. But if you if you have that set, it will no matter where you have any blur, it will not blur it. It will use a low quality fallback. Um, and the reason why it's not some sort of Per widget thing is because it's going to it's per it's the game the game developer has to decide mm -hmm. it's not something the engine can decide for you. No. Um, this is this is a conversation we we have a lot with people. It's yeah a lot about your decision making around right. It. So mm -hmm. um, just to show also that it works in the scene. I'm just going to disable some of this junk so it's not oh yeah so it's not in your face. Um, I have a map here. I've already set up with have a widget. So it's uh, it, it, as you can tell. I mean, I think I have this on the highest blur setting, mm -hmm. but y you can tell it's it's blurring that rect rectangle behind it. Now, now immediately when I saw that, I was thinking like, wow, that'd be really great if I put dialogue on top of it and I had to like go in yeah. the bottom and have like a low amount of blur to it or something. And so yeah, you, you can, can animate the blur too. So in sequencer, you can oh. actually keyframe the blur. Check that out. I didn't even notice it down there until you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's, it's not. A, it's it, it's it's got. Every, you 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 can tell when anything's can be animated yeah. if it's got this little keyframe icon next to it. Okay, as long as they're all grayed out because we don't actually have an animation, mm -hmm. but you can animate it. Sweet. Yeah. So there's a low a, like a a smaller strength blur for this. So that'll be in 4.15. Um, awesome. Yep. 
that's a really great effect there. We have a lot of questions that have come in here about the blur and also about um, the outlines. Yep. So are uh, you ready for q and I'm ready. All right. Now we're going to take those questions live from chat and the forums that we have received over the course of the show and get to them. The first one comes from the forums. George Davis asks, Right now, text with font outlines is restricted to UMG slash Slate. Are there any plans for true in-world 3D rendering of text with font outlines, essentially something like text render actor but with outlines? Um, Outline text render actor? So, right. So text render, out, text render ac actor uses um, the offline fonts, which basically you have to have a pre-atlas mm -hmm. texture with your font characters in it. No, there are no plans right now to add that. We're trying instead to improve the widget component so that actually what we'd like to do with that is have that have true in-world rendering. So es essentially the way that works, if you don't know, is that you make a UMG widget and you apply it to the widget component in the world. Mm -hmm. If you just had text in there, it would just work with outlines. Yep. Um, it should have basically the same that effect. I'll, if we... We would rather have that than separate actors for every kind of different thing. Um, the problem with the widget component right now is it actually renders to a render target first and then puts it on a quad in the world, which is not desirable if for things like this. Um, but I mean, it, we another possibility is that we add the slate-based font rendering to the text render actor. That's a possibility. But I think the direction we want to take is that um, we actually we actually try to move forward with having widget components themselves do true in-world rend rendering, mm -hmm. um, which is definitely something on our, our list of things to do. Um, another option, because they're offline fonts, offline means you can do whatever pre-processing you want to them. So you, there's, I think there's actually I've seen this on the forums. There's there's some tutorial somewhere of someone pre-making an outline font. So this was to work around the case where Slate did not have outline fonts. And I believe what they ended up doing is using an offline font editing program mm -hmm. to uh, to actually create a st stroke font, which is what outlines are, how they how they work, because they're rendered with a... Uh, it's a stroke, a stroke around stroke. the outside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so they they actually just baked that into the true type file and then imported that. So you could do that right now with offline fonts. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it gets us an option, yeah. but... Um, Outline fonts are kind of legacy. I mean, if you think about it from a, like a game development standpoint, you kind of have to know all your text ahead of time, which is kind of difficult when you're making a game that maybe has chat or something like that where you don't know all the text that's going to be there and mm -hmm. you have lots of different languages that you want to target. A lot of variables to consider. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. Next question. Um, let's see here. I didn't get the name of this one. Uh, how can I add gradient font material to a runtime font or conversely? Okay. So this one's not quite in the scope. Of well, I mean, I can show it, that real quick. Yeah. It's a, basically, yeah, just how to add a, a gradient. So I'm assuming by gradient material. you mean... It's something that fades from yellow to yeah, top to red at the that's bottom. What, yeah, I know, um, that's what a gradient is. I mean, like, gradient font. I'm assuming you just mean an effect that applies onto the font, the, uh, an existing font. Yeah, just be like uh, a material. So I can, I can show that real quick. We actually already have a function, a material function, that's available called li li linear gradient, I believe mm -hmm. it is. Um, and so a super, yep. super simple version would be something like this. And this is already a font material I've set up. There's your gradient. Um, and we can actually just apply this to our font. Yep. Um, and so you can, it's kind of subtle because this is not a super strong gradient, but there you go, that's a gradient. Um, so that's it's that easy. Yep, that was a really small question off the forums. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, we talked about draw column performance. So we had a bunch of questions about that in the beginning, performance-wise, how is it? And you got to talk about that quite a bit. Yeah, you shouldn't worry. Mm -hmm. Outline fonts, you should not worry about the performance. Uh, gradient, or uh, the blur, blur you yeah. should worry about performance, depending on how you're using it, and depending on the platform. I mean, it's a it's a post processing effect. It's a Gaussian blur. If you if you know how Gaussian blur works, we're doing all the tricks that that are typical of game engines and runtime solutions for Gaussian blur to make it as fast as possible. But it's a lot of texture samples, mm -hmm. and that's what is going to make it slow. And then, you know, things like render target switching on mobile is just slow. It's just slow. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot you can do about that because mobile limitations. I mean, they're getting, it's certainly getting better. I mean, yeah. high-end mobile, you should have no problem. Oh, yeah. And the new so, Snapdragon just got, like, announced. Yeah. Oh, that's really sweet looking and all that. Um, 
but yeah yeah like yeah. you said the, especially with the outlines because that one came up during the outlines discussion outlines not a big deal for yeah i wouldn't anything. worry about that i mean no um uh, any plan? Oh, sorry. De Gaffer asks, any plans to expose rich text support in the editor? Is that yeah? So we've yeah. been talking about that a lot recently. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a concrete plan on how to do it because rich text is very complicated. I mean, you 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 can make a word processor out of it if you wanted to. Um, we're thinking about supporting the basics out of the box. Like, let's say you just want to combine text and images. Um, that's what we're thinking of right now. We don't have a, like I said, we don't have a concrete plan or time, but yes, we, we realize that rich text is missing from Slate and Yoongi. Cool, so it's definitely on the table, it's on no the, time it's on frame. The, it's on the radar. Okay, um, uh, let's see here. Can you keyframe the outline thickness to animate pulse effect? So, so yeah, does that one have Can a keyframe next to it? On the uh, outline No, it doesn't. Size? Well, we okay. should add that. That's definitely a good thing to add. We Yes, absolutely, we will add that at some point. Um, Probably, at, some, try, at some point. <laughs> kind of, we're already kind of looking at, we're kind of in bug fix mode for 4.15, so it probably won't make it there. But yes, that is absolutely something we should add. Cool, cool. Um, let's see here. And then, yeah, people were asking about drop shadows and yeah. pa pattern overlays, which would just be a material yeah. effect, basically, that yeah, you I add mean, to it. If yeah, you the font material overlay. basically gives you the full power of UI materials. You can add texture samples, do whatever mm -hmm. you want in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ninjin42 asks, uh, have you ever thought about radial text for UMG and text renders? Now, Nick is also in the chat answering stuff, but we are going to have an archive, so I'd like to just have us. Radial text? Barry, you can out, uh, yeah, just like, align it. Mm, no, I mean, yes, it's been thought of. It's it's one of those things that like isn't uh, that often requested, um, but yes, that would be awesome. I would love to have more text effects, like you know, f spline following text, basically, mm -hmm. where you could make z wiggly patterns and things like that. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, no concrete plans right now, but that would be an awesome feature. Cool. Alrighty, that's good. Uh, VR Banana asks us a few questions here. VR Banana's first question here is. Um, uh, can we morph texts and fonts? Uh, say we want to do some sort of a water effect on text. Well, that would be a material, I think. Uh, uh, and then, like, uh, you were actually, that would be like a material and an offset, but it's not a mesh, so... It is, I mean, obviously, <coughs> so every yeah. character is a quad. Uh, it doesn't have enough vertices, probably, but, I mean, there is vertex shader support. Like, you could make a vertex shader y yeah, um, but it doesn't your material. It probably won't do what you want. Yeah, because it's just going to have those edges, and that's it. So it's yeah. not going to have a lot to work with. Um, <clears throat> Again, that's more text effects. It would be awesome, but we just yeah, we don't have a time frame for those kinds of things. But right. it would be awesome. Uh, I agree. Let's see here, this is another question about text effect here, um, and about the blur effect. Pirate Tony asks. Um, does it work with a uh, 3D background, meaning UI filter a 3D background, which we actually got to see? Yeah, so, so um, it, uh, it will, it, it will, it will work. It will f blur the scene. Mm -hmm. If you only wanted to use it to blur the scene, you could. But there's already ways to do that. Like you know, we have post processing, obviously, for scenes, depth of field, things mm -hmm. like that. They can, they can blur. Depends on what you want to use it for. If you want to just blur the scene, in some specific case, it might work. There's also, you know, it won't do things like. Y there's, if you want to blur the scene for just blurring the scene, like you want, like we have post process volumes where as player steps into it, they just, just post blurs, process the scene, yeah. right? Like that's, <coughs> that's a better way to do it if you're just looking to blur the scene. Alrighty, um, Vera Banana had a couple more questions, but they're more like you said, um, uh, features that aren't implemented yet, um, such as 3D text yeah. um, blockouts. But that would just be meshes in the end. Um, uh, yeah, I mean we I. I 3D text would be awesome again. Like you know, Maya allows you to basically you know take make some text and like, essentially extrudes it out or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, at, at some point it'd be awesome to get to those. Yeah, actually, um, um, so Alan Willard, you guys know, comes on the stream a lot. One day he showed me that what he had done is went into 3ds Max and just did every character as a 3D model, imported them into yeah. the engine one day just to, for fun, and then yeah. I mean, if you if that. again if you know all your languages, I mean, it obviously gets complicated with with languages that have much more mm -hmm. characters than say English. Yeah. Um, but if you know all your characters ahead of time, you could essentially make a mesh atlas, which is just you know you decide which characters you're rendering and you pick them out of this bucket of meshes which are for every character. Cool. Cool. Yeah. 
Um, all right, uh, Smiler2 asks, again, uh, this was sort of related when we answered the water thing, um, is there any way to access each of the characters' position, rotation, and like the verts to it uh, if we wanted to, or is that going to be like C++ uh, only, or is it exposed in the editor somewhere? Um, if you want to access the verts of a text block, you should of a character, you would have to use a vertex shader. Um, the vertex shader, though, operates on the entire text block, not individual characters. So it's going to be hard. It's not a C++ versus editor thing. It's it's just not exposed in a nice way. Um, I look. I mean, there's a lot of text effects that obviously people want. I mean, it'd be nice to get to them. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, it, of course, if you have it's a not request, possible really easily. You, know, you can go to the forums and you can make feature requests there for yeah. uh, text effects, um, yeah. things like that too. Um, cool. Um, but I mean, I think the direction that we really want to mm -hmm. go is expose as much as possible to things like materials because we we can't make every one-off feature for 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 everything. But it, it, that's what materials are for. Like it allows yeah. the user to to make their own shaders. Because so. because at the end of the day, this is all aesthetics. There's no reason that you really need it to do anything more than like yeah. a rendering trick, essentially. So exposing so. vertices would be nice, allowing you to maybe tessellate the diverts or whatever to, to get more control for like a vertex shader would be nice mm -hmm. allowing mm -hmm. 3d text I mean those are all things that we could we, we would like to add all right cool um so the last question that we've got in here um, which I had grabbed earlier and then um, it uh, fell off but the question was uh, with the blur block uh, mm -hmm. Is there any way to taper off the edges of it or to kind of have it fade from heavy blur to lighter blur um, around the edges? So one of the things, not right now, but one of the things that I want to add mm -hmm. it, um, in the future, in the, in the near future, uh, I should mention that the blur, the blur started out as something that I just decided to do kind of in my own time. Um, it's like an Epic Friday project yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, and then I, and nice. I extended it over. So it's, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like scheduled work that you know so again right now it's i'm kind of doing it in my own time but um yes yeah, so what i want to add is material support to it so that you mm -hmm. could actually get the blurred result and then mess with that in the material so in that way you could make a texture that has you know a taper kind of effect with you know the alpha channel or something where it kind of fades out and you could basically multiply that by uh the the scene or by the blurred scene, or, and, and you would get that effect. Huh. I do want to add that. Um, you could also do a bunch of other things in materials that way, like have a more complicated mask where it's like, you know, you could imagine like applying, well, I, rem I removed it, um, but uh, like applying this uh, crazy, like imagine like all the white areas are blurred and all the black areas are not, right? Like you mm. could do something crazy like that in a material if you could, oh. if you could so like really complicated masking and things like that. So I yeah. do want to add materials. Um, I am super interested in this feature, so... Um, that would be incredible. I'd like, to, I'd like to do it soon. Yeah, like it's immediately just tons of applications <laughs> come yeah. to mind. If you can just yeah. cut out chunks of it and, and make it... And you can like, animate it and stuff. Uh-huh, um, uh-huh. So oh, yeah. Yeah, that's where I want to go with it. Wow. But there's well. a little... It's kind of complicated because... The material, like you, you, you need to basically have input to the material, a texture, which is the blurred area, um, which is. I have some usability concerns about that, but uh -huh. um, yes, we. Uh, that's so. No, you can't do it right now, but yes, it'd be awesome to do it. Cool. And I do want to add it. Um, I actually have a question myself because it wasn't asked in chat. Ex uh, I guess in didn't see anything like it, but it did occur to me. How does that effect um, look uh, if you put it apply if you apply it on a 3D widget, and oh, if okay. you were to use it in 3D space in VR, would it drive your brain crazy? Um, so, the thing about this is that it can't blur in three in the in the world because the world has not been rendered yet. There's nothing to blur. Uh, oh, oh, because so it's, it's rendering like, with it's, the it's world. It's like some Inception okay. craziness where y like you're yeah. trying to blur the yeah. thing that doesn't exist. Because mm -hmm. um, it has to sample. So we write that's to... That's sampling. Yeah. It has to do in the right we order. We write to uh, the uh, bunch of render targets, but the render target has nothing in it. I mean, maybe... It's not really possible, but I mean, obviously you could use like the previous frames if you copy that out. It's, it gets enormously expensive. It will work if you, if you put a full screen... Like like if you had this full image behind it, um, mm -hmm. 
it will work because it's not blur. It's it's not trying. It, this, the fact that it can't render the scene is fine because it's got this entire image on top of it. Mm -hmm. So if right now, if you put this in the world and you try to run it, it'll just it'll be black because the thing it's sampling from has no information in it. So in 3D, you have to have it. You have to have a full quad behind it that's got some image on it. Okay. Um, hmm. But again, for 3D, like if you're just trying to blur your scene. Like we already have a post-processing volume and post-processing settings on, on cameras and things like that, which are tuned towards doing things like that in the scene. This is meant as a rectangular, like 2D blur, where you're blurring UI and, and kind of things behind it. It's, it's mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, that uh, seems to be about it for today. If you had any questions that we couldn't quite get to on the live stream, um, or if you're watching the archive here, check out the details. If you didn't get the question answered, there is a forum link. Go to that forum post. On the forum post under events, you'll see uh, this one for the UI outlines. Feel free to ask your questions there, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can with um, some more detailed answers. Or if it's not totally related, we'll see who we can find to uh, help get answers to you. Um, but that's that for today. Um, thank you all so much for coming out. Thank you so much, Matt, for coming out to show us this awesome new feature. And actually, the, I think this, this might be the first thing that we've shown off that's actually a 415 exclusive thing, um, which we normally wait for Mike to do. But Mike was kind enough to say this was cool to show off. It's so, um, you know. also, I mean, it is, it's probably in GitHub right now oh, if you really yeah. want to use it. Yeah, actually, it's, it's definitely in GitHub already if you yeah. want to mess around with this. It, because that's how the engine works. Basically, yeah. everything that we've got done here, except for a couple of small offshoot projects and whatnot, go right into the engine, and you get them directly. So there you go. Um, so thank you all, and I uh, will see you all on Tuesday, the 10th, at 2 p.m. EST, where we're going to have Alan Noon come on to talk about his custom uh, exporter script for splines. Um, so he will be talking about how to get splines in the engine uh, from your 3D modeling program and do some really cool stuff with them. Uh, it's pretty neat. If you follow him on Twitter, uh, Alan Noon has some really great um, tutorial video. Or, or, Actually, it's just like a little post that he has up right now. It's cool detail of it, but he'll get into complete depth of it on Tuesday. So be there. Um, until then, have an unreal weekend, and we'll see you later.